Welcome to an overview of what's new in OnBase 16 integration for Esri. First, and what I'm most excited about, is that in OnBase 16, we've integrated the web client with Esri, allowing users to dynamically display documents on a map, much like we did with Unity in OnBase 15. And we call this feature Map Documents. While we call it Map Documents, it's so much more than just displaying data or documents on a map. It's about showing how those documents relate to each other and to location. It makes the where important. And it's not just documents, business data that has address information on it can also be sent to a map, allowing us to visualize that data from another system, an HRIS, vendor data, uh, any kind of historical data or reports. All of that can be sent to the map as well. So before we get to the analytics part, let's start with the map documents and how it works. First, the user clicks from the hit list and they say send to map. And then the documents are displayed on an interactive Esri map. So new capabilities for the web and consistency with that of the Unity client. And of course, integrating with Esri. This is huge, really cool functionality that does more than just simply display the documents on a map, but instead it transforms that document data into business intelligence. So here we have a hit list of documents. I'm gonna right click and send those to an interactive Esri map. We can see the different search results in the upper right hand corner have been named and color coded and sent appropriately to the map. And these documents are geocoded on the fly, meaning that as long as they have those four address keywords, we're able to send them anywhere in the world. This is international out of the box to that map. The users can hover over the pinpoint to view the auto name, and then they can click on the auto name to view the document itself. And it's this visualization of database information and documents that we can now do something with. We can relate it to other data and make more informed decisions. So what are the requirements in order to make this happen? From a software perspective, you must have the web client, our integration for Esri, and you do need either an AGOL or an Esri portal account, which is acquired from Esri. And many of you probably may not even know that A, you either already have Esri or you're eligible to get some Esri licenses for free. Certainly some test licenses from for free from Esri to play around with this, but uh, my understanding is that many higher education organizations can even get some licensing for free from the Esri side, I should say. Uh, the configuration and installation of this, on the document type, you'll select a geolocation checkbox and that will um, mean that the documents can be sent to the map. But we do also need four address keywords, and that's your simple city, state, address, postal code, as it relates to location in the world. You need the web server, the application server, web or Unity server, I should say, um, and the Esri ArcGIS runtime installed locally. Once this is all set up, then you're good to go. I should mention though that this is found in the HTML web client only and not the ActiveX as well as the Unity client, which was new in 15. In addition to our map documents in the web, the Unity client also has a new view map ribbon button. And you may recall that in 15, and we just talked about it a moment ago, we can send Unity documents to an interactive Esri map. Well, the sending of the documents to the map would essentially be the only thing that would open the map. Now this view map button can be used to immediately open a map that someone may want to work with without having to navigate through search results and send to the map. So for example, if an insurance company wants to see the weather for a given date, it allows them to quickly show the map window without having to send documents to the map. And then documents can be sent to that same map, it can be minimized, and then they can hit this view map button again to bring it back up. We've also made some usability enhancements to our Unity Map Documents feature in the forms or in the areas of the content panel, the add content panel, the identify tool, and our map layers legend. I think it makes more sense if we look at each one in detail. 
So first, let's look at our add content filter. This is where, when on a map, we're showing our on-base documents, but we also wanna add some external information, some content, some weather data, some income information, whatever the case may be. So now using the updated add content filter, users can add multiple sources, they can add data from tabbed content, they can search online for information, and navigate through all of this external content, adding multiple pieces at once to the map. So a nice usability feature. When using the identify tool, users can toggle it on and off when they want to find out more about the metadata of the external content. So now we've added this external content to our map and we want to find out more about it. So in the upper right hand corner, you'll see that little blue circle with the eye. That is our identify tool. I deliberately turn that on, and then when I go over to the map, I'm getting information data from Esri about that location on the map. So it's a little bit more deliberate as part of the user for them to select the piece of data, map data, that they want to know more about. Nice usability feature. And then last but certainly not least is the map layers legend. Another word for that is simply the table of contents down in the bottom right hand corner. Can now show the symbology for the external content. So big word symbology, all we mean by that is a symbol or a representation or an identifier for what has been added to the map. So the purple and blue circles in the lower right hand corner are then represented on the map and we know what they are. You also see the map name and edited results, just giving users more indication as to what's been added to the map, which is helpful, especially if there's a lot of external content that has been added. Keeping with the family of integration for Esri, we now have mobile access capabilities to capture the geolocation. So basically mobile can capture the latitude and longitude of an image as it's being uploaded. So whether it's a new document, an e-form, a Unity form, it can store the geolocation as part of the document metadata. So while those address keywords do need to be on the document, they do not need to be populated. This lat long in the database is all we need. So by storing the geolocation, for example, users can see that an on-site visit had taken place at the correct location. And this is not just limited to a field adjuster, but now we know the exact location of where pictures and data are captured. DIP, or document import processor can now also include that geolocation data as part of the dip index file. So if we happen to know the lat and lawn, we can bring that in as part of the dip process stored in the database and we're good to go. So while the address city region and postal code and the checkbox to send to the map do need to be selected for these document types, those keyword values don't necessarily need to be populated. The lat long is good enough. We also, for map documents, have a document listener. And this is geocoding documents that are eligible to be sent to a map upon import, as well as re-geocoding if the required keywords change. So while we can do this geocoding on the fly, why not do it up front at import so that when a user sends the document to the map, they don't have to wait for us to do that geocoding before we send it to the map. So it will geocode all geolocation able documents in client web and Unity, and it will update if any of those address keywords change. So we are all in on this OnBase and Esri functionality, and we've now seen changes for the user from the web client to Unity to geocoding upon import. From our administrator, we have replaced um, our Silverlight feature-based controls with pure HTML web-based controls. We have centralized configuration across the OnBase system, and now everything is stored in the database. And we now also provide configuration by user group, including that available external content. So a lot of this configuration done within our GIS configuration utility is now all stored in the database and it's all done in one place. So this configuration utility was new in OnBase 15 and in OnBase 16, all the configuration created using the tool is now saved to the database, which of course keeps it centralized, but also makes upgrading much easier. 
For more information, visit the Integration for Esri product community. My name is Colleen Alber, and thanks for listening.